to 2.0, Lindsay, to uh, Mr. President, who has been such a steadfast supporter, Chuck Morse, to Jim Adams, and to the whole amazing team of volunteers here in New Hampshire, and all those that traveled from Florida and all around the country to come participate. Thank you, and Germany. Thank you so much for being here. The pundits had it all figured out last Monday night when uh, the Iowa caucuses were complete. They said that the, the race was now a three-person race between two freshman senators and a reality TV star. And while the reality TV star is still doing well, it looks like you all have reset the race. And for that, I am really grateful. <laughs> Granted, staters understand that this is a race not to be on the back bench of a the United States Senate, this is, we're electing the President of the United States, a person that has to make tough decisions. And I got to share my heart and share my ideas about the future of this country, and I'm so grateful to have that opportunity here in New Hampshire. And along the way, along the way, I did a lot of listening and learning, something that I think is important in, in public leadership. I learned from Missy Cruz, who's right behind me, a woman who is now a leader in the recovery movement here in New Hampshire, which has to spread all across this country. We have an epidemic of addiction in the United States, and what I learned is we can fix it if we all act on our heart to make sure that our families and our loved ones have a second chance. I learned from Eric Olson of the Londonderry Chamber of Commerce, a guy who's expanding his microbrewery business, He's waiting for a stinking stamp inside the Department of the Treasury, a stamp that was created during the Prohibition era. It'll take six months. He's already financed the equipment. He's ready to sell more craft beer. But because of the bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., he can't do it. I will fix that, I promise you. <laughs> I've learned firsthand of the struggles of veterans all across this state and the country that are waiting for the Department of Veterans Affairs to fulfill their contract with the veterans. When they came back home, they have not gotten the care that they deserve. And in fact, at a town hall meeting last Saturday, one veteran, we told, we learned the story of a veteran who did, was, was declared dead, who didn't get his benefits, of course, the Social Security, because he was declared dead. He, his, his daughter received a, a uh, death certificate. They continued to provide the benefits inside the Department of Veterans Affairs for this guy. It took nine months to get it fixed. Here's the deal. I will be a president that fixes these things to honor our veterans. And we, just like him, is not dead. This campaign is not dead. We're going on to South Carolina. conservative reform governor in the state of Florida, the largest swing state, where we cut taxes $19 billion and led the nation seven out of eight years in job creation. I want to take that to Washington, D.C., to lower our taxes, to increase income and increase jobs for this extraordinary country, because people are suffering right now. In Florida, we shrunk the state government by 11 percent, 11 percent because I took on the powerful public unions. We need to do that in Washington, D.C. to fix the mess there as well. Washington, <laughs> Washington needs to become, once again, the servant rather than the masters of the American people. And I know how to do this, and I will restore the proper balance. Government cannot grow faster than our ability to pay for it, and in a Bush administration, it will not do it. In Florida, I took on the teachers' union. Hillary Clinton's first endorsement was the teachers' union. The second was the other teachers' union. I will struggle and fight for the families that want a better education for their children. And in Florida, we did just that. The first statewide voucher program, the second statewide voucher program, and the third statewide voucher program. Real accountability around our kids, and we have lots of students here. And as president, as president, I will fight for families that only want a quality education for their children because they know that is the great civil right of our time. I will be a conservative candidate, embracing conservative values, and I will do it just as I did as governor of the state of Florida. Pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, embracing strong, wholesome family life, and we need a president that does just that as well. And as president, 
one of the first orders of business is to repeal Obamacare and replace it with a market-driven system. And I can promise you I will be a Tenth Amendment president focused on shifting power back to our states to allow us to create a 21st century government. Washington can't do it. But I believe here in New Hampshire and in Florida and all across this country, if you give the power back to the states, they can craft 21st century solutions for education, for the environment, for transportation, for health care, for providing those that, are, that need help as it relates to breaking out of poverty. We can do this, but it's going to require someone with proven leadership skills. And I have those skills. We also need... We also need someone that can defeat Hillary Clinton in the fall. And for that matter, not just Hillary Clinton, apparently maybe Bernie Sanders as well. Who knows? Here's the deal. To beat Hillary Clinton, we need someone totally transparent, who's released 34 years of tax returns, who provides 340,000 emails for people to see, who, whose life is an open book. I'm proud of the life I've lived, and I've been vetted more than any candidate. We need someone with a proven record to defeat Hillary Clinton, because the, the Clinton hit, hit machine is coming right at the Republican nominee. We need someone who's been tested, and I'm that guy. Look. We're living in dangerous times. Here's what I know to be true, having a front row seat, watching history unfold. The next president will be confronted with a challenge that we haven't identified and opportunities that we might miss. Who do you want to serve as president of the United States? Who do you want to lead this country? Do you want someone like Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump that will pursue that will pursue their ambitions at the expense of service to the people that truly need the help? Do you want someone that organizes their life by dividing us? Do you want someone who suggested that their enemies are the Republicans, people that disagree with them? No. We have had that. We have had that for seven long years. Now we need someone that believes in the goodness and greatness of the American people. Someone who will organize to find unity again, to create a sense of purpose for all Americans. Someone who will work across the aisle to fix the mess. Someone that respects the Constitution, that won't trample over it. Someone who will work with Congress. Someone who doesn't assume that just because you disagree with someone, it doesn't mean that they're a bad person. We can fix this together. The American people deserve to be we need, we need a president with a steady hand, with a proven record who has a servant's heart, who doesn't believe it's all about him. That's why I'm running for the presidency of the United States and why I'm so grateful for the people of New Hampshire. You've given me the chance now to go to South Carolina, where we are going to do really well, thanks to you all. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your help.